Hello and welcome to this iMesh tutorial. So today I'm going to show you how to use Corona Proxy and I think some animations later. So the Corona Proxy is basically I've taken this really low poly disgusting looking bed with 20k faces and then if I if I hit F12 we'll see what happens. Let's see the export time is pretty much zero. It's rendering straight away but the bed is in full detail here. So there's my weaved uh, blanket and you see all the creases in the bed which looks nothing like let me just close this again which looks nothing like this. So how that works is basically I have this file here and you see this bed proxy export dot CGO and it's 130 megabytes and what that is is the original high poly mesh for this bed and then I have decimated this bed to hell so I can still get the correct dimensions and then applied the high poly mesh to this low poly mesh so when I render there's no export time because Corona already has the exported file so it's pretty much an instant render which is amazing especially for the standalone until uh, the interactive rendering comes to this but imagine you have a whole scene with loads of different trees and the export time is 20-30 minutes because it's just a crazy big scene but if you've previously created a proxy for all of these objects your export time is going to be minutes if anything so I'll show you how to do that now so let me just actually if I just undo I might be able to go back to where I was undo history and then right get this right so there's the high poly bed and what you want to do is create this this file here so to do that you want to click on the bed make sure it's all one object and then go down here and actually I don't know if it necessarily needs to be one object but I have been doing it so anyway go down to here in the object panel it's right at the bottom and find Corona Proxy Exporter and then you want to find a folder that you want to export it to and then click accept and then what you want to do here is click on bed proxy export sorry type in the name of whatever you want to call this bed and I've called it bed proxy export and then click create proxy this can take a few minutes because especially if it's a really high poly bed so one thing to do is go over to here and click toggle system control and you'll be able to see that it will say something like exporting or writing new file and then you know that it's not just crashed and you can see that it's actually doing something and then when it has exported you'll have three files so this is the object itself this is the material file and then this is a material index if you click on that have a look inside that it's basically just a list of the materials in order and the associated material nodes and all these things I think I'm not entirely sure how that works but uh, if I look here some imesh fabric white go over to here imesh fabric white so it's basically this there right next thing we want to do now that is exported is create the low poly mesh um, actually I'll just show you so the reason why you create a low poly mesh is because if you just create any old mesh like this apply the scale and then apply the high poly mesh to this we'll do this here now so use as corona proxy use external object again in the object panel and let's link the file the high poly one to the so the object and then load in the .mtl and that's all good and now if I hit F12 we should have a delicious looking bed up here okay perfect so that's worked we now have the mesh of the high poly bed and everything is happy so the reason why you don't just keep it as a primitive cube and you actually create a low poly object of the original object is because you don't know if it's going to render this way, this way or upside down you have no idea so let me remove this and click on this low poly mesh and just decimate it so decimate to 0.01 and then when that's finished it should be about 20k faces and I think if I was to save this blend file then it would be about 3 megabytes so you can create this corona proxy object ahead of time and then when you come to use this bed in the future you know you already have the corona proxy already created
anyway, so we now have this. Oh, let me just apply it. And you can see it's a really horrible looking bed, but now we still have the dimensions of the bed. So if we were to put this into the scene, we know exactly where it's going to go and how it's going to look. So let me just uh, wait a second. Okay, cool. Actually, just add a plane. And this is an example quick scene. Like, imagine you're making a scene and you want to push this bed right up to the wall. Uh, you'll have no idea if it was just a little cube where it sits. But now I know that this bed is going to sit right up against the wall. Let me just quickly add a material, click new. And now let's uh, go into here and then click enter. Beautiful. Now we have the high poly mesh. We know exactly where it's sitting in the scene. And I'm probably going to. Oh, I just noticed. Okay, that isn't the beautiful scene. <laughs> Sorry, let me let me just go back. I haven't actually applied the high poly mesh. Use external object. Let's go back here. High poly mesh, and then the material file. Right, now we should have a really beautiful scene. And this should be beautiful. Right, that's the one. So now we have all the details. We can see it's right up against the wall and where it's sitting on the floor. And I can now save this blend file as proxy bed just so that I have the low poly mesh and then if I want to create a scene with this particular bed instead of importing the bed I'll just import the proxy instead and yeah so that's perfect now I'm going to show you how to do animations let's say you have a huge scene that takes five minutes or even ten minutes to export imagine 500 frames with a 10 minute export time so that's 5,000 minutes divided by 60 wait a sec it's at 600 hours. Sorry, I'm, it was my birthday yesterday I'm a, and I'm a bit struggling today. You get the point. The export time itself is going to take like forever, when, whereas you can spend all that precious time actually rendering the scene. But now it works. So Actually, let me get the high poly mesh. So let me just undo everything. Undo history. Let's go back to here. So there is no proxy object on this, and if I was to hit render, it will take a minute or two, because it then needs to export this as it usually does. And then when it gets to the next frame, you would imagine that it would then have to export the whole thing again. But that is why this overwrite geometry and click only modified button is here. Now this button is here, it means that it will render this scene once, and then it will only export the objects which have changed since the first frame. So let me go to toggle system control so I can see what's going on. And I want to quickly, actually, let's create some frames. So I'm going to click on the camera at frame one, press I and I, and then just move this over here. Sorry, to move this over here. Frame 10, I, I, and then go over to here. Right, and I, sorry, I and I. Right, so now, oh, whatever. I've got a moving scene now. Right, the next thing you want to do before you click uh, animation is make sure you have overwrite geometry, uh, this button clicked here, and then make sure that you have an export path, so that would be your, oh, do it into the same one, proxy two. And then I'm just going to click JPEG for now. Actually, JPEG. And I'm not interested about being transparent because it's a JPEG anyway. And you want to click use progressive time limit, and I'm going to set that just to 10 seconds. So what that does now is obviously Corona is a progressive renderer and that you can let it render for days if you'd like. But obviously if you want to do an animation and you want it to go to the second frame, you need the render to finish at a certain time. So what you do is you do your scene, you do test renders and test renders until the point where you're ready to do the animation. And then you set the progressive time limit to what you know is the correct amount and you're ready to go. Actually first, make sure you also have these settings ticked. So make sure you have when you're doing your test renders make sure you set all of these so use sharpening use color mapping so I'll set that maybe to 2 highlight compression maybe to 50 and click that button oh. yeah and then add bloom on glare make sure you have all this set and then we should be ready to go so I'm just gonna hit animation 
and go to this system control and you'll see that it's now going to try and export the bed and it's going to take forever because it's just quite a high poly bed so I'll come back in a minute when it's finished okay cool so that has now exported and it took uh, 91 seconds and now you see in that it's now building the render and the render is going to start but you'll see that the actual corona pop-up window hasn't appeared and it's not going to because I'm not sure why but I think that it I don't know why so you'll see that it's going to do this for a bit and you want to make sure you have this open so you can actually see what's happening and then eventually the render is going to start once it's finished getting the program ready and let me just go back to the proxy file proxy 2 and go to wherever you put the export path and it's going to render into here and you see it's rendering 2, 3, 4 and when it's taken 10 seconds it's then going to finish and then it's going to move straight onto the next frame but you'll see that the export time is no longer going to be there so now the next render is starting and we don't have to wait then for the export which is amazing so now we can do animations in Corona and you'll see that it has now exported all of these so let me load this up and see what it looks like there we go so that's the first frame and you see it also exported all of the paths which is incredibly helpful too um, perfect so let's just wait a minute for this next render to start and then wait 10 seconds okay so that one's finished and is now denoising and then you'll see some new files appear in here perfect so let me just see those scene one scene two and you'll see that now now it's all moving perfect I mean I, I don't need to carry this on you're gonna see that it's just gonna keep doing that and I hope that that has cleared that up. You this uh, developer at the moment is flying through updates, so keep an eye out, and I'll try to keep you up to date of what's new as well. You know what? Bonus, there is actually a new thing. <laughs> I'll show you right now, and it is a new subsurface shader, so I might as well show you that now. It's Let's just make a cube, and go to the new node setup, and new material. Oh, sorry, let me just go over here quick one let me just remove this and you want to type in skin we now have a skin shader or subsurface shader so let's do skin color yeah um, I haven't really played with this much myself but uh, I think that it should be pretty cool let me just um, make this uh, I don't know a bit more interesting right let me just have a smooth it right then cool now if I hit F12 and see what it looks like yeah it's just a really quick subsurface shader actually I think I can add it you can add um, reflections yeah so that's it that should be enough for my video and I'm gonna go rest after my long night last night and if you guys want any tutorials on how to do anything else with Corona and Blender, then do let me know. I'm planning to eventually try to do some modeling tutorials, such as the bed and how I made the uh, this. Let me just uh, go here. So this weave that I made, I want to show you how I did that and stuff. So if you have any requests, then just let me know and I'll try to get onto that for you. Okay, perfect. Well, I'll talk to you guys another time.